What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Ms. Ms. Cool Cat County YouTube, representing the birds. Training camp, day three. We're going to see walking to him once. We're going to see Zach Ertz. We're going to see everything right here and right now. Carson Wentz and the LVP. Yeah, we're following it as we do on our social media. Wentz Day. Along with Jalen Hurts, there a nice picture to start the morning, friends. Yeah, it's a, we were blessed with beautiful weather to to start off training camp these last couple days. But obviously, the first experience with some moisture out there, and they're going to give it a go. And like you can see, it is going to be a very light practice uh, for these guys. No pads on, no helmets on. Everybody. Uh, just to enjoy a nice, a nice little afternoon in the, in the drizzle. You know, I'm looking at the, at the fashion statements here, and I'm looking at all the different angles. And Eagles fans, make sure that you download the official Philadelphia Eagles mobile app. You can view all of these individual camera feeds in the palm of your hand. But we see Carson Wentz here on this Wednesday, and it is important to note that the, the two of them, as we heard, when Doug was named the head coach, Doug Peterson, he and Carson would be joined at the hip in their career. They are both entering their fifth year here in Philadelphia. And I think it's important to just kind of go over Carson Wentz here and what he's done as a quarterback with the Philadelphia Eagles. Second highest passer rating in the NFL on third and fourth down since 2017 behind Patrick Mahomes. Second in the NFL in red zone efficiency in the NFL since 2017 behind only Drew Brees. Passing touchdowns per game, third in the NFL since 2017, behind only Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson. Most passing touchdowns NFL quarterbacks in 2017, Carson Wentz with 27th in the NFL. Frank, if anybody has any debate about is Carson Wentz a, an elite quarterback in the NFL, I mean, let it be real. First, there's no question about it. When he's on the field, he is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL and will always put this team in position to compete for a Lombardi trophy. There, there's no arguing that point. Uh, and a guy that, honestly, seeing him every day here at practice, you remember early in his career, it was like everyone was charting every throw and every outlet was doing the completion percentages in practice. There's, there should be none of that this year. I don't think there's any of that this year. It's all about every day you know Carson Wentz is one of the playmakers on this football team. One thing I do want to dispute, though, as we kind of saw Kelsey and Wentz there, Kelsey referred to Carson as having a gag moment. Now, I looked it up on Wikipedia, and was my, was my picture on there? It was, Brandon. It was actually my brain. It was my therapist on that. But uh, a dad bod is a slang term in popular culture referring to a body shape, particular to middle aged men. I don't think that his body shape is middle aged. He's muffled up. Yeah, that's being mean. Now, take a look here. At Darren Sproles, formerly a great running back, hit returner in the NFL, now with the Eagles coaching staff, really working with some of these young backs, working in the return game as well. Drew Staley talking about that this morning. An invaluable addition as the Eagles keeping some of their former players, Connor Barton, Brent Selleck, Darren Sproles, in the family. I love that. Yeah, no question. And you mentioned working with the returners, so it's not just that he's working with the running backs, but you'll see him often working with first-round pick Jalen Rager back there uh, as he's catching both punt returns and kick returns. So having those veteran experiences, guys that have just got done playing the game, they're able to resonate with these guys. Even the young guys coming up in the league, uh, you know, they say, oh, I played with this guy in Madden. have so much respect for those guys. And that's something that absolutely carries over. And Deuce Staley is certainly one of those guys. Yeah, Deuce Staley, assistant head coach, running backs coach, um, talking about his group this morning. And for all of you fantasy football lovers out there, it sure does sound, and Frank, we've said this all along, that Miles Sanders will get the football a lot in the run game and in the pass game this season. Carson Wentz obviously has a lot of confidence in him. So we are here on a Wednesday morning at the Novacare Complex. Insider Dave Spadaro along with Fran Duffy. We're here, and we've been here since Monday as the Eagles put the pads on. And we kind of get a sense of what this football team is all about, Fran. What has kind of jumped out at you here the first couple of days? Well, I'll tell you what. It's been awesome just to see the young guys that we didn't get a chance to see in the spring and in the early parts of the summer after the draft. So the first-year players, the second-year players. We've seen Jalen Rager. 
We've seen Jalen Hurts. We've seen Quez Watkins. Uh, Kayvon Wallace had a diving interception yesterday. John Hightower had a big catch each of the last two days. So it's just been great seeing so many of these young players making plays. That's honestly been one of the things that stood out to me over the course of the first couple days. Some running backs who are in the mix. Eagles looking for some depth here. Uh, Michael Warren Jr. there. Elijah Holyfield. Adrian Killens. Uh, uh, one of the smallest backs I've seen probably since the days of Lorenzo Booker. And then, of course, Corey Clement facing, as I wrote in PhiladelphiaEagles.com, one of the ten players to me facing a very critical summer. One of the heroes of Super Bowl 52. A couple of injuries have hurt him. And we look at the offensive line. Andre Dillard, in his second season, he will be the subject of my Eagles Insider podcast that comes out later today. The draft class of 2019, one year later, Fran, what role, I mean, I think Andre Dillard is as important as just about any single player protecting that guy's blind side, no question. And you see, obviously, all the athletic tools. Uh, you know, I, I wrote about yesterday in our practice notes, Dave, uh, the one-on-one session. All right, I would be watching the offensive line versus the defensive lineman, and there was no player that sparked a bigger reaction out of the entire group than when Andre Dillard stood up Josh Sweat. As Josh Sweat tried to bull rush him, Andre Dillard sat down, took on contact, didn't give up any ground. The entire offensive line was really, really excited for him. So I think that that speaks to the improved play strength from the second-year tackle, really trying to step into his first year, obviously, as the starter on the black side. And when they were in team, Miles Sanders, who I love the bucket hat, by the way, I've got to get me one of those bucket hats, note to Eagles Pro Shop. <laughs> uh, really, I thought they were running left a lot. Kind of challenging Andre Dillard. You know, you've got to be physical. He's obviously got all the physical tools, um, but certainly have to show that he can be durable, that he can hold it his point, hold his leverage, um, and look, the Eagles are now lining up here on the offensive line with some younger players. To me, this is this is a depth question, this is one big question on this football team. Who are your backup offensive linemen? The Eagles lost some big Eagles to Detroit in free agency, valuable piece of the puzzle there. Who stepped up and kind of is that swing tackle here? Yeah, and I think that that's one of those things where there are plenty of possibilities. Now it's a matter of how, how do these guys kind of stack themselves? Who, who separates themselves from the pack? Is Jordan Mailata able to step in and create that separation? Does the rookie Jack Driscoll come in and, and you know really impress people right off the bat? Does Matt Pryor show that he's got that versatility? He's already done that in the NFL, playing both tackle and guard. So that's what these next couple weeks are going to be about. Typically, we'd have the preseason to help create that separation, but those small position battles, I think, are going to be really important to be able to watch over the next couple of weeks. If you are just joining us, we welcome you into our continuing coverage of Eagles Training Camp 2020. One stay. Blue Cross. The group shot there of the running backs, yeah, smile for the camera, guys. Looking good. <laughs> um, it's raining today. It's raining today. They're not wearing pads. No. Captain Obvious here. Corey, Corey Clement is just one of those guys that like, you feel like everybody that's around him just loves to be around him, right? Yes. Always smiling. Always. So we're going to stick with this for a while until, well, hopefully the rain won't get too heavy here. The pads will go back on here later in the week. We're back tomorrow and then Sunday. And friend, I gotta believe that in one of these days coming up, maybe Sunday, is when Doug says it's time to put the pads on and a couple of tackle lockers. to the ground. Yep. There are 14 padded practices permitted in the NFL during this training camp period. And so today, obviously, is not one of them. Yeah. I mean, to me, you know, Doug Peterson talked about this, I believe, on Monday. You know, he was asked, what, what's the strategy for the tackling coming in? And he said, we're not really... Number one lab. We're going to do the same kind of thing that we've done in previous years where we'll have a couple of periods over the course of a few days where, you know, maybe it'll be a goal line period where, okay, we're going to tackle to the ground or a red zone period or a short yardage period where they'll tackle to the ground. But outside of that, it's going to be business as usual. And they're going to just try to take care of these guys, take care of the players, make sure that there's the, any, you know, injuries are kind of taken care of as they get ready for Washington in week one. And by the way, I would argue that Jason Kelsey, although the position lends itself more to having a dad vibe, 
would have a bit more of a dead bug. He's got he's got a little bit of a jump on Carson though. He's got what is it, a year head start on Carson in the dad not areas. <laughs> Let's hope Carson Wentz does not go the Jason Kelsey route. We love J Jason Kelsey all time all timer. Uh, that's not a quarterback vibe. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not, no, it's not. We want the Carson vibe, the ripped Carson vibe. Friend, let's talk a little bit about the quarterback position. We know that Carson is the starter, the face of the franchise. Nate Sutfeld, in a similar position to where he was last year, suffered the wrist injury. The Eagles go out and sign Josh McCown. And Nate just kind of faded. Hasn't thrown a pass in the NFL since 2018. Has only thrown 25 passes in his NFL career. So he is the number two quarterback here. Jalen Hurts, still learning the way, has looked good here early in camp. Level of confidence with Nate as the number two. Yeah, I think that obviously the coaches have a, a lot of faith in him to be able to come in and execute the offense at the drop of a hat. You know, it, obviously uh, more of a skill set to be a backup quarterback in today's game, but uh, a guy that obviously can be, make all the right decisions. The arm talent is, is fine. He checks all the boxes there. I remember watching him when he came out of Indiana, and he was a draft pick of the Washington football team that the Eagles will face off in week one. He has the tools to be able to work with, and a guy that surely has proven himself to be able to stick in this league as a backup. Yeah, and I think when we watch, it was just, we take a look there at Jalen Rager catching punts, I think the Eagles are going to put him in a lot of position to get the football in yeah. his hands. With Nate Sudfeld, when we watch him in practice, he's running with the number two offense against the number one defense. And when he looks down the field, there just isn't anything there, so he's forced to check down. I'd like to see Nate throw the ball down the field. Obviously, he's not seeing openings there. Yeah, that's something that you know, you'll know you see with a lot of – it can be tough at times because, obviously, training camp being an evaluation period, you're trying to get good evaluations on the quarterback, the receiver, the, the DBs, everybody on the field. So you want the play to be run uh, as it's executed, as it's drawn up. But uh, DJs! Like you mentioned, we'll see that today, right, uh, in this light version of practice where Nate is going to be going up with the, set, with the backup offense against the starters on defense. So it's, Wait, uh, Slay! There we go. Of that. Deshaun and Darius Slay. Y'all all all finished. Veterans. Critical. They're gonna go against each other a lot. That's a star-studded trio right there. <laughs> Deshaun <laughs> Jackson, big play slay, Miles Sanders. That's uh, three of the most important skill players. Uh, <laughs> you all all finished. These three I might be at the very top of that top five list. Uh, when you look at Slay. Miles and Deshaun, you are la la finish. You were asked to catch a kickoff in an NFL game oh, okay, right. and return it before you got just destroyed. Look at them. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> Look at these three. You are la la finish. I'd like to think that I can get like to like the eight yard line before I get completely crushed. That's too far though. I'm not, I'm not crossing the ten. I've had. People here in the organization, media relations people say they can get it out to the 20 yard no, line. Get here. Exactly. <laughs> get out of here. First of all, you have to like try and track that ball and get yeah, under it. You have to catch it to finish. I mean, that's the, that's the tough part that one, you know, in and of itself. I like the mood in the building. I like the mood with this football team. I like the confidence that the Eagles are showing. It's an excellent blend of experience, veterans who have won, and some young guys who are learning the Eagles' way. And when we've done these interviews with Big Play Slay and with Will Parks and with players who've been around the league, they talk about the energy level. So I hope that comes through here today. While this is a light practice, kind of get a sense of the personality and the light-hearted nature and just kind of the camaraderie being built with the football team, which I think the chemistry, you asked me why did the Eagles win the Super Bowl in the 2017 season? One big, big reason, team chemistry. You gotta love and trust everybody around you. You, you took the words right out of my mouth because everybody, obviously, in, in leadership uh, here in Philadelphia was here in 2017, saw what that team, how that team was built, how that group interacted with one another. The reason why they were able to forge their way through all of those injuries on both sides of the ball was that it was such a tight knit group and everybody had such trust in each other, even you know, from coaching staff with players as well. So this, that is the culture that this coaching staff is trying to foster here, and you can see that right here on the, on the film. All right, we take a look there. On the right is J Javon Hargrave. Now the Eagles going through their individual drills with the D-line. Javon Hargrave is out for, we have been told, the term is multiple weeks. 
So we don't know what that means. Upper body injury, uh, he was obviously the big ticket signing in free agency. Slay, of course, came over via trade. And the Eagles envisioned a dynamic defensive line group with Hargrave, Malik Jackson, who I think has looked good out on the field. Fletcher Cox, Hassan Ridgeway. Brent, looking around the league, that foursome. It, it's, and Gerald McCoy losing his season in Dallas. That's really a, a tough injury for the Cowboys and for Gerald McCoy. How good could this group be? It's no question. It's the best defensive tackle group in the NFL from one to four. And when you look at Fletcher Cox, one of the elite players at the position, I would really challenge anybody to say that they have a better duo. If you were just saying Fletcher Cox and Malik Jackson, that'd be one thing. But then throwing Jalen Hargrave into the mix, uh, it's almost a cheat code for this interior rush. They're a really, really talented group on the inside for this Eagles defense. Jalen Rangar. And I think Malik Jackson is somebody that we may have forgotten a little bit about. Yeah, One of the dominant defensive tackles in the league, a durable player, released by Jacksonville. The Eagles scoop him up last year. And boom, he goes down in the yeah. opener against Washington. And we forgot about him, but I, I feel like he's somebody with a chip on his shoulder. I feel like he's somebody who's a leader. And I feel like he's somebody who say, wants to say, hey, NFL, I'm still a really good football player. Versatile, yeah. disruptive, powerful, technically sound. I mean, he is, he checks a lot of boxes. One more minute, y'all, then I got to end it. For different positions throughout the course of his career. Defensive end, defensive tackle. He's quick, and he can collapse the pocket, and he's just very technically sound. He's one of the more underrated players in the league. And you see, if we can go back to that Malik Jackson shot, or you can see it on Jalen Rager as well. All the players wearing their Rothman patches. Those are the practice jerseys here. We are, of course, at the Novacare Complex, which is spectacular, which they've done a great job creating physical distancing, getting the message through to the players and the coaches and the staff that physical distancing. All right, y'all. That's enough from practice. I love what I'm seeing. From Rhaegar, Miles, Slay, and Jackson. Oh my God. You are out of finish. Fly, go fly, birds. Ah.